Please welcome Ford Motor Company Chief Operating Officer Mark Fields. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? All right. Well, first off, it is a very exciting day for everybody at Ford, but also anybody who's ever owned a Mustang or has admired a Mustang. It is really a special day. And hopefully all of you will remember this day uh, as you go forward. And it is, it's also very special because we're doing simultaneous events around the world. So right now in New York, Alan's in New York introducing the vehicle. Uh, Bill and Stephen uh, Odell introduced the vehicle a little earlier today in Barcelona. And then a little later today, we're going to be having events in both Shanghai and in Sydney. So a very special day uh, for the company. And when you think about it, we got the whole Ford family here, right? We have our wonderful employees. Welcome this morning. <laughs> Importantly, we have the Mustang program team. Where, where are you guys? Raise your hand. There they are. We have some uh, Mustang Club members in the audience this morning, so thank you for coming. We, uh, we, also, have, uh, we also have members of the media, and of course, we have our fabulous dealers uh, here as well. So give them all a hand. And we have some very special guests. We have Mr. Edsel Ford, a member of our board, member of Ford Board Motor Company directors. So welcome this morning, Edsel. And a number of our executives. We have Hao Tai Tang, our head of purchasing. We have Bert Jordan. We have a whole host of folks. So welcome to everybody, and welcome to all the members of the media. You know, when you when you think about it, Mustang cuts to the heart and soul of, of Ford Motor Company and, and, and really represents our company at its best. And you can see that not only in the Mustang, but in all of our vehicles. And that's a real kind of testament to the nine million and going customers that have purchased uh, a Mustang since we, we introduced it uh, way back when. And so, it, as you know, when you get in a Mustang, it has that, it ignites that sense of optimism and freedom and it just, it puts a smile on your face when you slide into that seat and you wrap your, your hands around that steering wheel. You don't know why the smile gets there, but you know it's because of the Mustang. And for 50 years, uh, Mustang is not only one of the most successful cars in the industry, it's also become a cultural icon. There are, on Facebook, it has over five and a half million followers and uh, fans, and that's more than any other Car. I think that's more than Lady Gaga. Uh, I don't know about the president, but I know it's more than Lady Gaga. Uh, and interestingly, over half, almost 55% of those, uh, those fans are outside the U.S. So it has universal appeal. There's 300 Mustang clubs in existence spanning five continents, which is kind of amazing. And of course, the Mustang has more than 3,000 film and TV and video credits over its history. I mean, think about this. Remember uh, Goldfinger, the James Bond movie back in 1964? Remember that Mustang that the, the woman was driving and James Bond was following her behind up the, up the mountain? Uh, remember uh, Fast and, uh, Fat, uh, Gone in 60 Seconds? Remember Eleanor? That was a pretty cool car. And of course, who could forget back in 68, Steve McQueen in Bullet, the most awesome chase scene in the history of, uh, of uh, television. And of course, it's been immortalized in songs, right? Wilson Pickett, remember Mustang Sally? Remember uh, Vanilla Ice, Ice Ice Baby? No, let's forget that one. Uh, but the five liter was in there too. Uh, so, you know, it, it really is a cultural icon. And that's what gives us so much uh, confidence 
that there's a, a tremendous amount of uh, uh, demand that's going to be out there for the Mustang because, again, it, uh, you get behind one, you have that moment of joy when you're, when you're driving around. And as I mentioned, it has universal appeal. Interestingly, when the vehicle was introduced on April 17th, 1964, in the speech, they talked about how Mustang was developed for young America. Because at the time, 40% of the population was 20 years or younger. And although it was designed for young America, the appeal of the vehicle spans all demographics, you know, both genders. It transcends nations. We have, uh, it has appeal across the world, and that's why we're so excited to, uh, to uh, introduce it around the world. And of course, with 50 years, everybody has their own story about Mustang, right? And for all of you have your story. I'll share my story, and it's, it's kind of tangential to Mustang. I grew up in the New York area, so one of my earliest memories, I was not yet four years old, my parents took us to the World's Fair in Flushing, Flushing Meadow, Queens. And I don't remember the car, but I remember a lot of crowds. And when I was you know, three and a half, four years old, it kind of freaked me out. But now I remember why there were so many cars. So that's my earliest Mustang story, even though I didn't know it at the time. But when you saw those vehicles out there, did you check out that powder blue Mustang, that pristine powder blue Mustang? Well, that was the first retail Mustang ever sold. And do you want to hear the story of the young woman who bought that Mustang? You want to hear her story? Yeah. All right, great. Well, I want to introduce Gail Wise. Gail, please come up. Okay, Gail. So this is a, this is a great story. So you purchased the car on April 15th, 1964, two days before it officially was launched. So let's rewind back to that day. Tell us your story on that day. On that day, I was 22 years old. I had just graduated from Chicago Teachers College and got my first teaching job in the suburbs. So I needed transportation to get to my third grade class. So my mother and father and I went to Johnson Ford on Cicero Avenue in Chicago and I told the salesman that I wanted a convertible because I was used to convertibles. My father had a 49 Ford convertible and we had a 57 Ford convertible and I thought I deserved a convertible. <laughs> so. <laughs> and so you did. <laughs> so he said, I have none on the floor but come in the back room with me. I have something special to show you. So we followed the salesman to the back room and under a tarp like this was my baby blue convertible. And I said, oh, that's for me. It was, it was sporty, it was perfect. It, it went zoom, zoom. <laughs> <laughs> it was, a, it was a, a young person's car. I was real, real happy be buying it. But the salesman told me, he said, he wasn't really supposed to be selling this until Friday, but I don't know why, but he sold it to me that day. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened on the drive home? <laughs> and on the drive home, I found out how special this car was because everybody was flagging me down to slow down, and they were waving at me and giving me high fives, and uh, <laughs> I felt like a movie star. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Now, uh, what does the 50th anniversary mean to you for the Mustang? It's, um, it's incredible that it uh, is still such a popular car, and I always had a good time driving mine, so I'm assuming that's why everybody still loves it. And wow. it's a part of Americana. When we go to shows, everybody has a story about their Mustang, their mother's Mustang, uncle. It's a very popular car. That's terrific. Now, uh, you've been married to Tom for how many years? 47. 47, and you've had your car for 50 years, right? Right. Okay, so <laughs> if, if somebody came to you and said you could either have the car or Tom, what would you say? It's a hard choice. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you like me to ask Tom the same question? <laughs> Let's give Gail a hand. <laughs> 
That's fantastic. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there listening to the story about the two days early, and I'm, I'm thinking of Jim, Steven, and Doug here, thinking, gee, how did they do that? You know? <laughs> uh, but overall, everybody has a, a great story uh, about the Mustang. And I have to tell you, our designers and engineers spent a lot of time going back through the history of Mustang and looking at those design cues from the past and have interpreted that for a car for today. So with no further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the all new 2015 Mustang. Please welcome Ford Motor Company's Group Vice President of Design and Chief Creative Officer, Jay Mays. What Mark mentioned was a, uh, a great thing. 50 years, we were inspired, both the engineering and the design team, by that 50 years. If you look at this silhouette, what you see here, it's a bloodline and it runs back and courses through the veins of every Mustang back to 1964 and a half. There are invaluables that make this car a Mustang. It's the long hood, really powerful, that reaches out. Fastback profile of that cabin, and of course, the short rear deck. Now let me break down the design elements, if I can, for just a moment, to tell you the essentials that we kept to make this all new Mustang the car that it is. First, let's look at the front end. That proportion of the shark nose is really important. And of course, it's got the shark nose like many Mustangs before, but we've added that big open front grille. And as you start to sweep around to the side, you'll notice a dramatic plan view in this vehicle. There's no bumper shelf, and that allows us to visually shorten the vehicle like never before. Working our way around to the side of the vehicle, you see a masculine three-dimensional body side beautifully crafted, and it all culminates in these fantastically powerful haunches at the back of the car that, by the way, are 40 millimeters wider than today's car. It leaves absolutely no doubt where the power hits the ground. On the back, three words, tri bar tail lamps. These have been a staple of Mustang since the 60s, and every great Mustang has had them. I would offer up that these are some of the best ones we've ever done. You can actually reach in with your hand around each individual lamp, and they are so bold and wonderful to look at, but you'll want to run your hands over them as well. And then as you pull away from the car, look at this back end. As we pull away that rear three quarters, it all comes together. Great proportions, lower and much wider as I, match, as I mentioned. Powerful surfacing unmistakably Mustang. Now, just a moment on the interior as well. Inside, we find an interior that's inspired by aircraft, a wing-shaped interior instrument panel, big analog gauges in front of the steering wheel, more analog gauges in the center console set off by toggle switches and a big starter button circled by an illuminated red ring. Absolutely fantastic in terms of tactile feel. All of this comes together with premium materials like aluminum and leather, and the interface and fit and finish of those materials are like no Mustang we've ever done before. Now, colors, sure, we've got black, and we've got silver, and we've got metallic gray, but we've also got race red, competition orange, gauge green. We've got great colors. My favorite, triple yellow, solid tri-coat. It will sear your eyeballs out. <laughs> a fantastic car. Now, together, we put these together with the colors, the interior, the exterior, to create a, a, a Mustang, sure, for a larger global audience, but let's be clear. 
We wanted this Mustang to be clear, to, the, to, to be true to the brand's illustrious heritage. We designed a Mustang first and foremost, and then we gave it to the world. That's the design of the all new Mustang. I hope you love it. We're gonna bring up now Frank Davis, who's our North American Executive Director of Engineering, to tell you all about the engineering. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thanks, Jay, and, and uh, good morning, everybody. I'm excited to represent the Mustang team today and really talk about all the terrific engineering that went into this all-new vehicle. And there's really three key areas of focus that I'd like to talk about. One is put the zoom in the new Mustang, outstanding power and performance. The second uh, attribute that we really focused on is really raising the bar from a ride and handling uh, perspective and establishing the Mustang as a world-class ride and handling vehicle. And then finally, we focused on making it the most technologically advanced Mustang ever. Let's start about with our commitment to power and performance. This Mustang will have a three-engine lineup. They will be the most powerful and most fuel efficient engine lineup ever. All of the engines will deliver more than 300 horsepower. Our base engine will be the 3.7 liter V6 engine, delivering more than 300 horsepower and 270 pound feet of torque. It's been in our lineup since 2011 and it's just an outstanding entry level engine. But the newest member of our Mustang engine lineup is the all-new EcoBoost engine with twin scroll turbocharger for both great fuel efficiency and outstanding power and performance. And I can tell you, based on driving this vehicle, it meets every element of the Ford Mustang DNA. Take a look at those numbers, and we're not finished yet. We're gonna deliver more than 305 horsepower and more than 300 pound-feet of torque, which is more than most V6s and V8s. It's just an outstanding engine for this great new vehicle. And finally, if you're going to have a great Mustang, you have to have a great V8 engine. And we do in our uh, new 5-liter V8. We've improved the cylinder head. We've improved the intake. We've improved the valve train. And I guarantee you, that we will deliver more than 420 horsepower with this new V8 engine. And I can't wait to get the opportunity to drive with you to hear that great throaty exhaust system. And oh, by the way, we've increased the top speed to 155 miles an hour. But we didn't stop there. We've improved both of our six-speed transmissions making them much more precise and much smoother. And all of our automatic um, vehicles will be equipped with live and drive paddle shift transmissions. So that's our power and performance story. Now let's talk about how did we create world-class ride and handling? Well, as Jay mentioned, this is an all new platform with an increased front stance and increased rear stance. And it's an all new platform and all new top hat. So we took full advantage of the new structure and stiffness in the vehicle. We've added integral link uh, rear independent suspensions to go with our uh, independent front suspension. And we've matched that in a vehicle that once you get behind the wheel, you too will say that it is world class from a ride and handling perspective. And oh, by the way, in that video, you talk about the key of this vehicle is also having the stop, uh, stopping power. We've increased the brake sizes on both the front and the rear brakes, including adding a 15 inch rotor, six piston Brembo caliper on our performance series. The last area the engineering team really focused on was creating technology advancement for the Mustang. We have 20 new customer-driven features. 
Jay hit on one of them. Intelligent access with push button start. And we've got great driver assist technologies like blind spot information system, cross traffic alert, and collision warning. And we also focused on our enthusiast. And we have two great new technologies for them. One is selectable drive mode, where the customer can choose normal, sport, track, or wet, and get the optimal performance out of the vehicle. And launch control. As you know, we introduced launch control with the 2013 Shelby GT500. We're bringing launch control to Mustang so all of our customers can win at track day every day. <laughs> so there you have it, the most capable Mustang ever. Thank you. Mark? Oh. What it, what's, oh, sorry. <laughs> See, we're a team. We help each other out, right? Uh, well, again, hopefully you, you love the Mustang. And again, I want to thank everybody that's here. And also, when you bring a vehicle like this together, you have great suppliers. And I know we have a number of the suppliers in the audience here, but everybody that's helped us to bring this car to market. Before we close, um, you know, the Mustang is a special car. And it's a car, just like our company, that has heritage. And, and for me, heritage is history with a future. And I want to tell you just one last story that uh, I think epitomizes the Mustang, but also our company. Uh, I got a letter uh, a couple of months ago from one of our retired executives. And he was cleaning out his attic, and he found something, and he sent it to me. And he, he sent a letter, uh, Bob Rui, who used to head marketing and sales uh, for us. And he sent this letter, and he said, Mark, you know, I was part of the original uh, marketing team that introduced the Mustang. And at the time when they introduced it, the management gave them, the marketing and sales team, a challenge to sell over 400,000 Mustangs in the first year. So lo and behold, when the year was up, the company sold 417,000 Mustangs in the first year. Now, I can definitely tell you that is not our volume target for this vehicle in the first year. But that being said, as a reward, the management team gave all the members of the marketing team at that time a pair of golden, what they called floating Mustang cufflinks. And in the note, Bob said, I'd like you to have these, and I'd be honored that on the day that the company introduces the 50th anniversary of the Mustang, that you would wear those cufflinks. So I'm wearing those cufflinks today, and I just want you to know, I don't own these cufflinks. I am borrowing them. <laughs> I'm a custodian of these because I look forward at some point in the future to giving this to the next generation as we hit another milestone of our Mustangs. So thank you all for coming. We want to invite you all up. Check out the vehicle. Don't touch it, <laughs> but just admire it. But thanks so much for coming, and have a great day.